welcome to the 60 meter North America net. My name is Harold Schofield, KC9 Hotel Hotel, and I'm going to conduct an antenna training session for Hampshire for virtual radio this evening. As I experienced when I first downloaded Hampshire 4, I was overwhelmed by the number of antenna modules and uh, system plugins that were available for purchase on Hampshire 4. Where should I begin? Well, what I did was I turned on the basic uh, receiver and familiarized myself with all of the controls and what their functions were. I listened to a few contacts and even gained enough courage to key the mic and make a couple uh, contacts on Hampshire 4. Now I wondered where was I going to go with this virtual Hampshire 4 software? What were my options? What did I need to buy? I felt I needed to organize uh, myself to get the maximum gain from my purchases on Hampshire 4 store. So I organized it into four major areas of interest. A, I wanted to make contacts with DX stations worldwide. I wanted to participate in local nets like the 60 meter net and the early bird 80 meter and the 80 meter award net, the 20 meter net and the 40 meter net. Try and learn a little bit about CW and the digital modes. Participate in uh, contests. And last but not least, work on my basic radio skill set. I needed to prioritize uh, these areas of interest so I could gain the maximum efficiency from my purchases from the shop and my interaction with the Virtual 4 software. Let's take a minute and review what comes with the basic transceiver that you get when you download the Answer 4 software. After that, we can review what we might want to add to improve our radio Hampshire 4 virtual experience. There are two free antennas that come with the basic transceiver configuration. First is the Victor Uniform 2 November Sierra Bravo Fishbone Log Periodic Array. It's a directional multi-band antenna, covers the bands 10 meters through 80 meters. It's made up of 21 elements, so it's physically uh, quite a large antenna. It's a good directional antenna for moderate range, and it has 3 dB of gain. The other free antenna that comes with the system is the IDC, or the inverted disc cone antenna. This is an omnidirectional antenna, also a multibander that covers 10 meters through 160 meters band. It's vertically polarized, so it radiates in all 360 degrees azimuth from your home QTH. It's good for a moderate range, and it has 3.3 .3 dB of gain. Now what modules come to control your antenna on the basic transceiver? One is the uh, antenna rotator module mini, and what it has is it has a circular image with the radiuses of the compass from 0 to 360 degrees imposed on the outer ring of the circle with a map of the world superimposed that can be turned on or off. 
centered upon your QTH based on your grid numbers that uh, are registered with Hampshire 4. There's a little LED indicator that rotates around the outer ring of the circle and it will be illuminated either red or green. It will be illuminated red if the antenna is not rotatable. If the antenna is rotatable, it will be in green, and as you click on a particular azimuth from your home QTH, the antenna will physically rotate to that particular azimuth, and the green LED will indicate the azimuth that you've selected. Another module that comes with the basic system is the antenna selector, and it has three basic modes. It has the all mode, frequency mode, and purchase mode. In the all mode, it shows you all antennas that are available in the shop for the for Hampshire 4. In the frequency mode, it will show you all the antennas that are available for a particular frequency. And in the purchase mode, it will show you all antennas that you've purchased from the shop regardless of what band you're operating on. And the right hand side of the little uh, module is an antenna with an LED on the bottom of it. This LED has three colors, red, yellow, and uh, green. If the LED is lit green, then the particular antenna you have selected in the window is correctly uh, matched and operating, designed to operate on the band that you are using your transceiver with. If it's lit in red, then the antenna is not appropriate for the particular band you've selected. And if you key the mic when the LED is red, you'll get an error message in the subscription subscriber window that says uh, hi SWR uh, please select a different antenna when you have a, a particular antenna selected uh, with the selector it will be highlighted in yellow and the uh, antennas that are available for use on a particular band will be highlighted in green. And those that are grayed out are not appropriate for the particular band you have selected or you have not purchased them. Another uh, optional module available for a moderate price is the uh, Antenna Selector Micro. This is a two-window digital display. The larger window on the right shows the azimuth that the antenna rotator is uh, pointed towards, and the antenna on the uh, the input window on the left, you can key in the azimuth you want your antenna to rotate to, or uh, you can uh, another way you can rotate the antenna is uh, using your lookup window. You can key in the call sign of a particular station, and in the uh, DX spot window, the statistics for the station will appear. Then on the bottom, one of the bottom two lines uh, will appear an azimuth. You can take that azimuth and key it in the little window, and your antenna will rotate to that azimuth, or you can just double click on the uh, azimuth number in the DX spot window and the antenna will rotate and the window on the right in the micro display will show spin as the antenna rotates to the new heading. An optional module is the antenna info plug-in. It's size 432 by 360 and works with the grid switcher module plug-in. The true antennas will provide multi-band coverage at a moderate range. 
You can receive and transmit omnidirectional with the IDC and directionally using the antenna rotator module plug-in with the VU2 NSB fishbone log periodic array. Welcome to Repeater 43-1, Brisbane, Australia. A transceiver on Hampshire 4 is limited to 100 watts power output. There is no linear power amplifier available to increase this effect this uh, peak emitted power. All of your peak effective radiated power gain must come from the antenna you purchase. You can use the antenna that has a higher dB of gain. This will increase your effective radiated power. How much power gain, you might ask. I've included a reference chart dB to power that will show you the effects of a higher gain antenna. It's available for viewing on the Hampshire 4 60 meter North America Facebook web page. Look at it for a reference. An antenna with 3 dB of gain, you will see, increases your effective radiated power by a factor of 2 or a maximum of 200 watts on the Hampshire 4 transmitter. A higher gain antenna like the 5 element Yagi with a gain of 15.5 dB will give you a factor gain times 40. Your power increases to 4 kW. This power increase will uh, enable you to be heard by many more stations on the Hampshire 4 virtual software network. One other factor to consider when evaluating an antenna purchase other than power gain is are you going to work one station locally or many stations long range? For local stations, your basic antenna that comes free with your transceiver will fill your needs nicely. If you want to hear and talk with many stations without moving your antenna when participating in a net like this, for example, an omnidirectional antenna with a low front-to-back signal ratio would be best in this situation. Hampshire 4 has a broad range of antenna to choose from to see what specific antennas are available. You can then turn to the Hampshire 4 60 meter North America Facebook page and look at the store selector. You can see there's long wire antennas, monopole antennas, vertical antennas, uh, quad antennas, two element dipoles, three element dipoles, five element dipoles, and eight element dipoles, uh, carteroids, November, NVIS uh, antennas, and uh, multi-band antennas like the IDC and the log two log periodics and uh, high gain array antennas which include uh, four two element two four element uh, antennas in an array that give you a very high gain you can review this uh, at your leisure uh, if you want to have a specific antenna detailed information at your fingertips, you can purchase a grid switcher plug-in module called the Antenna Info Module. With the Antenna Info Module, 
with the click of a mouse, you're enabled to see the antenna detailed specifications. The basic functions of the module are antenna information, antenna specification, antenna pattern, and antenna image. I've included a picture of uh, these four, four different modes on the Hampshire 460 meter Facebook page. You can review them uh, while I continue. Using this tool, you can get a clear picture of your specific antenna capability. This will help you select the best antenna to enhance your enjoyment of the Hamsphere 4 software by increasing the number of stations you can reach on a particular band. Remember, you have no correction possible for poor antenna selection. No amount of fine-tuning will increase your station's performance, as good antenna selection will. On your grid switcher module, you have 10 buttons. You can program one of these buttons to be the grid switcher module, I mean the antenna information module. I've included uh, some screenshots on the Hamsphere 60 meter Facebook page to show you a typical example of using the grid switcher module with antenna info plug-in. Welcome to Repeater 43-1, Brisbane, Australia. No matter how selective or how high a gain an antenna you use, Without good band propagation, you won't contact many other stations. The propagation plug-in module is an easy to use and understand tool that shows you at a glance what regions of the world have good propagation with your QTH at a particular time and date. You can select a specific band of interest, time of day, and region of interest to view. This tool may not be as detailed as VOLCAP, but it gives you a quick and easy picture of conditions worldwide. I can say for a fact that for a fraction of the cost, you can have a very capable antenna farm on Hampshire 4 compared to the real radio. My farm is no way possible I could own here in Crest Hill, Illinois. You don't have to worry about what transmission line to use or what is the correct matching unit for a particular band. Never will you have to install a ground plane array or pour a cement re barb reinforced antenna base. All of these items were taken into consideration by the virtual antenna design team at Hampshire 4 and are included in your purchase price. With your Hampshire 4 virtual antenna farm, you will never need to climb a tower to fix a problem or have to worry about how much real estate you need to add a new antenna to your farm. Using your antenna selection plug-in module, you can see what antenna by frequency band you have purchased. This module also shows you what antennas are available in the shop for the band you are using. You can also show all antennas regardless of band that are available in the shop and what antenna you own. With use of the antenna selector and antenna specification grid switcher module, you can get a clear picture of your station's capabilities. I've included a table that shows you typical sizes of simple dipole antenna elements. This table will give you an idea of how much property is needed for a real ham radio antenna farm. Also included are some typical radiation patterns of antennas and the effective height of antenna has on radiation patterns at a quarter and a half a wavelength. If you participate in Hampshire 
for RDF contests, for example, understanding these main and side lobe patterns will improve your results at RDFing. You can also get a better understanding why you hear some stations and not others while participating in a net or just uh, DXing worldwide. Hopefully this training uh, will enhance your hams for for enjoyment and give you some degree of confidence in selecting a particular module or a particular antenna.